Welcome to Marvel Land. This is the prettiest place in the whole world. We live in a big pretty house. My mommy, daddy and I. I have a lot of friends in Marvel Land. We all go to school and we play together too. Oh yes, my name is Saisha and this is my home. I have a lot of fun with my friends in Marvel Land. Would you like to be my friend? We shall have a lot of fun together. Come on and join us. of things to learn and places to go so great is the world in which we live it has so much to give so much to give so great is the world in which we live it has so much to give so much to give
So let's enjoy the music. Check the weather report, including air pressure, for your area every day for two weeks. Check the barometer each day. Monitor the barometer closely before, during, and after any storm. Record your results. Conclusion: The air pressure is high. The air will push down on the balloon. As an equal and opposite reaction. 14th of August, on this very day, Pakistan, a neighbor country, let go of the independence. Line. So let's swing stroke. and sing the dialogue 14. Balloon. Paper clip and tape. Procedure: Slip one end of the fishing line to the drinking straw. Find a place where you can stretch the fishing line at least 10 feet. And tie each end to something secure. Attach both ends of the line, making sure that the line is taut. Fourteen ones are fourteen. Fourteen twos are twenty-eight. Fourteen threes are forty-two. Fourteen fours are fifty-three. Take the balloon off to the straw as shown. Position the balloon at the beginning of the line. Remove the paper clip to release the rocket. Conclusion. 
Minister of our country addresses the nation from the red fort in Delhi. Glass, the nut inside is acted on by an upward force called the pulse for which the nut makes the nut go on. The pulse builds up on the side that has no pulse. Fifteen, fifteen twos are thirty. Fifteen threes are forty-five. Fifteen fours are sixty. Fifteen fives are seventy-five. Fifteen six are ninety. Fifteen sevens are hundred and five. Fifteen eights are hundred and twenty. Fifteen nines are hundred and thirty-five. Fifteen tens are hundred and fifty. Fifteen elevens are hundred and sixty-five. Fifteen twelves are hundred and eighty. Gold scissors. It is popularly known Little as sweet gold pack. To me, it is sweet because there are mainly 16 sweet languages spoken by the people living in different parts of our country. Dear friends, let's sway with the music and learn table number 16. Steel wool into tiny pieces. 
place one magnet on a table and fold the paper about half inch above it. With your free hand, sprinkle the steel wool bits on top of the paper. Shake the paper a little, then hold it still. Sixteen ones are sixteen, sixteen twos are thirty-two, sixteen threes are forty-eight, sixteen fours are sixty-four. With an inch of space between them. The magnets are opposites of each other, so that there is north and south pole at each end. Hold the paper with the steel wool pieces over the magnets. Sixteen fives are eighty. Sixteen sixes are ninety-six. Sixteen sevens are hundred and twelve. Sixteen eights are hundred and twenty-eight. Conclusion. The steel wool bits on the paper. Let's study some more properties of magnets. Sixteen ones are sixteen. Sixteen twos are thirty-two. Wooden ruler. Sixteen threes are forty-eight. Sixteen fours are sixty-four. Sixteen fives are eighty. Sixteen sixes are ninety-six. Sixteen sevens are hundred and twenty-eight. Sixteen eights are hundred and twenty-eight. Spread out the ruler. What is that? Paper clips. Coins, to pick up each of the materials one at a time. Make a pile of the things that are attracted to the magnet. Now try to block the magnetic attraction. Put a sheet of paper between the magnet and an object. Does it block the magnetic effect? Hey, Next, wasn't that really enjoyable? Block the attraction. I'm sure. Mom, dad and teachers will have no more problems making you learn multiplication tables. And Can you of course will have a complete fun filled session. Thank you so much. Now we can sing, dance and have Confusion? lots of fun while learning multiplication tables. A magnetic tables. field is the area and around the magnet in which the magnetic force is <laughs> Magnets attract objects made of iron or steel. That is why the magnet was attracted to the nails and paper clips. The magnetic field is strong enough to penetrate some materials, but not others. As you can see, the magnet works through paper and cloth. So but the the it's which we live. It has so much to give, so much to give. So fate is the word in which we live. It has so much Can create some remarkable attractions. Look at this one. It was amazing. Drinking cups, long bar and pieces of bread, paper clips, paper clips. Proceed. Set the glass upside down on the table. Place the bar magnet across the top of it so that. It extends at least an inch over the edge of the glass. Two. Tie one end of the thread to the paper clip. Touch the other end of the paper clip lightly to the bottom of the magnet, so that the paper clip hangs from it. Pull down on the thread very gently, so that the paper clip is still attracted to the magnet, but there is space between them. It may take a few attempts to get this right. Without changing the position of the paper clip, tape the thread to table. The paper clip will appear to defy gravity. Conclusion: The magnetic force acts on the paper clip to pull it up. You exert another force on the paper clip by pulling the string down. When the two forces are equal, the paper clip appears to float in the air.
aim. Some objects are naturally magnetic, but magnets can be created too. Requirements Steel sewing needle, bar magnet, clean plastic margarine container, water, dishwashing liquid, thin slice of cork, and a tape. Procedure Rub the needle across the bar magnet at least 30 times in one direction. Fill the container with water and place a drop of dishwashing liquid in the center. Put the cork on top of the dishwashing liquid. Then place the needle in the middle of cork. When the cork stops, the ends of the needle will point north and south. Spin the cork gently with your finger. When the cork stops, the ends of the needle will point north and south. Conclusion Non-magnetic iron or steel is made up of tiny units that have their own north and south poles. The units are jumbled up, so the poles face in different directions. If something causes the units to line up with all the poles facing in the same direction, the iron or steel becomes magnetized. When you rub the needle with the bar magnet, in this experiment, you line up all the poles in the steel. The needle becomes magnetized and points north. So kids, are you having fun? Yes! Aim. This next experiment is positively electrified. It is related to static electricity. You will learn how to create static electricity by manipulating a property called charge. Requirements Two balloons, two pieces of string, each one foot long, wool sweater or scarf. Procedure Blow up both the balloons and tie off each end with a knot. Attach one piece of string to each balloon. Hold the balloon by the strings and touch them together. What happens? Now rub the balloons on the sweater or scarf. Hold the balloons by the string and touch them together again. What happens this time? Conclusion Atoms are made up of very tiny particles. Some of these particles, protons and electrons, have a property called charge. Protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge. Charges that are the same push each other away and charges that are different attract each other. All atoms have equal numbers of particles, so the charges cancel each other out. When you first touch the balloons together, their atoms have equal numbers of protons and electrons, so they cancel each other out. The balloons are neutral to each other. By rubbing the balloons on the sweater or scarf, you knock electrons off the atoms in the wood. The electrons stick to the atoms in the balloons, causing them to become negatively charged. Since both balloons are negatively charged, they ripple or push each other away. Aim. Let's perform an experiment to see static electricity at work. Requirements Large plastic bag Lightweight tin baking sheet Small metal object such as a key Wood table Baseball size piece of clay Procedure Place the plastic bag baking sheet and metal object on a wood table top. Press the clay into the center of the sheet so that it sticks to it. Grasp the clay and rub the bottom of the sheet back and forth on top of the plastic bag for a minute or two. Do not touch any part of the sheet while you are doing this. Turn off all the lights in the room to make it easier to see the spark. Using the clay as a handle Pick up the sheet 
and hold it near the metal object on the table. A small spark should jump from the sheet to the metal object. Conclusion Static electricity is a buildup of charge on the surface of an object. By rubbing the plastic bag, you cause static electricity to build up on the baking sheet. The wooden table and the clay do not attract static electricity, but the key does. Because the key and the tray have unlike charges, the static electricity on the tray jumps to the key. You see this transfer as a spark. Aim. Kids, have you ever held a cup of hot cocoa on a cold day and felt your hands getting warmer? Yes. That feeling is a result of heat conduction. Requirements Butter, which is slightly softened, 3 spoons, roughly the same size. Out of that, one is metal, one is wood and one plastic. 3 small beads, a cup filled with hot water. Procedure Place a pea-sized dab of butter at the end of each spoon handle. Push a bead into each dab of butter. Place the spoons into the cup of hot water with the handles pointing up. Make sure that the handles do not touch each other. Which bead falls first? Conclusion When something is heated, its molecules begin to move faster. Moving molecules bump into each other molecules, making them move too. This process called conduction is one way heat energy spreads. Some materials are better conductors than others. For instance, metal is a good conductor. When you do this experiment, the heat from the water tends to move more quickly up the metal spoon, warming the butter and causing that bead to fall first. Aim. Kids, I want to ask you a very interesting question. Can I help you to keep warm? Requirements Two pieces of aluminium foil, two outdoor thermometers, paper towels, water, two saucers, freezer. Procedure Fold the aluminium foil to make two loose pockets. Leave an opening at one end of each pocket so the thermometers can slip in and out. Put a thermometer in each pocket. Soak one of the paper towels in water, then wrap it around one foil pocket. Wrap a dry paper towel around the outside of the other pocket. Lay one pocket on each saucer. Place both in the freezer. Check the temperature of each thermometer every 5 minutes for 20 minutes. Does one stay warmer? Conclusion As water begins to freeze, it gives off energy in the form of heat. When the wet paper towel begins to freeze, it warms the air around the thermometer just a little, so the temperature is slightly higher than that on the other thermometer. Once the water on the paper towel has frozen, the air begins to cool again. Aim. Do you ride bicycles? Yes. Can anyone tell me how do the brakes on the bicycles work? Requirements Two dry blocks of wood, approximately 1 by 2 by 3 inches, dry bar of soap. Procedure Hold one block of wood in each hand. Rub the blocks together for about a minute. Stop rubbing and feel the surfaces that you rub together. 
press the dry bar of soap on each block. You may have to press hard to coat the surfaces with soap. Rub the blocks together again. Does it feel different this time? Conclusion Most surfaces are slightly rough and will not slide past another surface easily. Friction is the term for this resistance. It takes energy to overcome friction and make materials slide past each other. A lot of that energy is converted to heat. You can feel that heat after you rub the blocks of dry wood together. When you add soap, the surfaces do not get as warm. Soap is a lubricant which makes the surface slippery and allows the object to slide past each other more easily. Aim. You may not be able to see air around you, but like all other matter, it takes space and has weight. Let's prove it. Requirements Three pieces of string, each 12 inches long, ruler, wire hanger, two large balloons, sharp pin or needle. Procedure Tie one end of a piece of string to the center of the ruler at the 6 inch mark. Tie the other end to a hanger so the ruler hangs horizontally below it. Find a place to put the hanger such as on the clothing rod inside a closet. Blow up both balloons to the same size. Attach the remaining strings to the balloons as shown. Tie one balloon to the ruler at the 1 inch mark and tie the other at the 11 inch mark. Adjust the strings to make the ruler level and the balloons balanced. Burst one balloon with the pin or needle. Conclusion Matter is any physical thing that takes up space and has weight. The air around us is made up of matter. When you blow up the balloons, you show that air takes up space. You also show that air has weight with this experiment. When you hang the two air-filled balloons from the ruler, it's balanced because they weigh the same. When you burst one balloon, the air escapes. The popped balloon does not weigh as much as the unpopped balloon. The weight of the air in the unpopped balloon pulls that side of the ruler down. Did you all enjoy learning super simple experiments? Yes, yes Maya. Maya. Maya, Vayu, we are very thankful to you for teaching us these experiments as we carry them in our day to day life but were not aware of them. Don't worry, kids, we are here to help you. Any one of you has any more queries? No, Maya. No, no Maya. Maya. Kids, enjoy your party and hope to meet you soon. Bye.
到。